Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Catalyst webinar series presented by the Education Committee for the Southern California PGA. The Catalyst webinar series is a bi-weekly educational platform for creating success and change in your club and career. We're very excited to introduce Mr. Duncan Sims, Director of Golf at Oak Creek Golf Club in Irvine. Duncan is the recipient of the National Merchandiser of the Year Award for the Public Category 2019, a sectional recipient of the Merchandiser of the Year for 2018, and I believe the 2017 Metro Chapter uh, recipient of that same award. Duncan's been at the uh, Oak Creek Golf Club since 2015. Since that time, in that position, he has made close to a 50% increase in merchandise sales in that time, which is phenomenal. Good morning, Duncan. Thanks for being on the Catalyst Webinar Series. How are you? I'm doing great, John. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's all yours. Take it away. Yeah, well, yeah, thanks, John. And uh, thanks, um, everyone listening at home or at work for, uh, for joining us this morning. Um, this is a really exciting opportunity for me to, uh, to kind of share some of the, uh, the knowledge we've obtained over the years. Uh, I, I was having a conversation with Randy Chang a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he's my neighbor. Uh, and, you know, I was just kind of talking about how I was going to do this presentation and, um, you know, I haven't, uh, haven't given many presentations to my peers uh in, in the past and it's one of those things you know like when are you ready to to kind of give back teach back do these types of things and i don't know if you're ever really ready to do that um but i i think at the end of the day you know we're all uh good at what we do we all have a lot of information to share and we can learn from each other uh and and, and i'm really happy to be here um doing that with you guys today um so jumping into this um this presentation here uh, merchan merchandising ideas that stick. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, John mentioned um, I'm the director of golf here at Oak Creek Golf Club. Um, I've actually been here for a very long time, um, more than 2015. Uh, in 2015, I, I, I took over um, all of the buying uh, for the golf shop. Uh, we used to have someone at Pelican Hill that would buy for both properties. Uh, so since 2015, when I took over, we had uh, we had that almost 50% increase. But um, I've been at Oak Creek for almost 20 years, so that's a long time. Um, I'm sure some people are like, what, what have you been doing for 20 years at the same place? Um, sometimes I ask myself that question, but I, uh, I love it here. I love the team. Uh, I love what we've, we've been, we've done over the years and, uh, it, it, it's exciting. There's always something different, uh, going on here. Um, so that's why I've been here for so, so long. Um, proud to say I'm a father, two amazing daughters. Um, I'm a, if you know me, I'm a giant music fan, uh, collect vinyl. Uh, I'm bringing this stuff up. It's not that important, but in case you see me down the road, we can have a, a, a chat about this stuff. So really into music and, uh, I'm, I'm a big outdoor enthusiast. Um, I've done a ton of backpacking and mountaineering, uh, a lot of stuff solo. So would love to chat with you guys about that down the road. Um, I, I'm a Canadian, um, I'm not, not super proud of that. Not, not proud of that. Just bring it up because that's kind of where where my journey started. It's golf, uh, and and with retail, um, I uh, I was a member at a at a, a small country club on the east coast of Canada. Um, grew up playing there and was just obsessed with equipment and and playing. And it became too much for my single mother to handle, so she put me to work at the you know ripe age of 13, and I was working at a bag room in Canada at the same club I was a member at. I worked three days a week uh, and I got to know the pros really well. Uh, that's how I got the idea of, of doing this for uh, making a career out of this. Uh, I was counting golf balls with those guys doing inventory, covering the shop counter when they took the breaks um, for so long, such a long time. Uh, so that's where my journey started. Um, I, I was, we did our inventory a couple of weeks ago, our quarterly inventory and um, I was counting balls there too. So it's been like 30 years I've been doing that. So, uh, and I love it. Um, and, and as John mentioned, um, you know, I was uh, fortunate enough to be the, the recipient of, uh, of some of these merchandising awards. Um, we're very, very proud of that at, at the club. Um, proud to represent the section and the chapter. Um, 
and 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 I believe that's why I'm here today doing this presentation and um, want to kind of share with you guys some of the things that uh, have allowed us to be successful um, at Oak Creek. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways that we could go about this 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 merchandise presentation. Um, I you know I, I know some of the folks listening are be at some country clubs. Uh, there's gonna be some resorts, uh, daily fees across the board. Um, I, I, I try to make this kind of a, a little bit of a, of a inside look at what we're doing at Oak Creek, um, almost a case study to some degree. Uh, and, and I hope that that, that helps everybody listening. Um, I, I, our goals today. So, man, I kept this pretty simple. I set the bar as low as possible. Uh, like if you, if, if you can take away one thing from this presentation that genuinely affects change at your club. So all I'm asking is, uh, or all I'm hoping for is that one of these things works for you, uh, at your club. Um, or it for for your for for your team or or, or in some form um I, i'm making a joke that i'm setting the bar low uh <laughs> i just taking away one thing but um in reality uh you know one thing can be extremely powerful um sometimes we try to take too much on spread ourselves too thin uh try to accomplish five things at the same time we really don't end up doing anything that well so uh at the end of the day um you know taking away one thing um, implementing it uh, properly, seeing it through, following up with it, uh, and having it be a success is, is actually a big deal. So um, you want to make, make light of that. Um, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we are going to talk about the importance of a team. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about vendors, how you work with vendors, some tricks there, um, the importance of analytics, reports, et cetera. Uh, we're going to jump into group events. Uh, group events here at Oak Creek were uh, a, a big, a big change for us, uh, and one of the big reasons we were able to make such a such a giant increase um, in, in our in our revenues um, over the course of the last four or five years. Uh, so we're going to get into some group events. Uh, we're going to briefly touch on visual merchandising um, because I think that's important. We're going to talk about a wellness area, which we'll get into, uh, and we're going to talk about uh, this idea of incremental revenue opportunities and my theories on that, and then um, briefly talk about industry trends. And then I have a final section where I just kind of rattle off a couple of things, uh, some kind of one-offs uh, of things that worked over here. So uh, let's let's start this off with one one big question for everybody. Just kind of ask yourself. Um, you know, what do you do better at your club? What do you do better than than everybody else, um, or at least as good as everyone else? Um, you know, what is your competitive advantage? It it, it uh, could be a lot of things. Um, you know, when I ask myself this question, two things come to mind here at Oak Creek. Uh, first thing that comes to mind uh, is, is our our giant practice facility that's all grass, 56 stalls. It's one of the Premier facilities in Southern California. Uh, we're really proud of that. Um, that's that's a big deal for us. That's a, a massive competitive advantage. And then, um, you know, when it comes to retail, one of the big competitive advantages that we have is we have uh, this phenomenal Tom Fazio golf course, uh, you, you know, in our backyard uh, when we're trying to do things. Um, and and so, you know, what do you do that's 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 better? What do you have that someone else doesn't have? Um, I, I remember asking myself this question. And you know, and, and specifically relating to to hard goods uh, and and equipment sales, I remember kind of making a comparison in my head. I was thinking, okay, well, you know, we're not really going to be competing with the PGA Superstores or the Roger Duns of the world um, for a number of reasons: uh, return policies, uh, the amount of stock that they have, and even pricing to some degree. Uh, we can compete in some other areas like service. Um, we can do some some outdoor uh, demo days, et cetera. But uh, a big thing that we had at Oak Creek is we had this golf course. Um, so um, I'm going to share with you uh, kind of a tactic that we put in play. It was uh, hugely successful, um, something I highlighted in my uh, Merchandiser of the Year application. I thought it was received well um, by the folks on the panel. Um, what we ended up doing is we realized, uh, you know, like most golf courses, uh, that half hour after twilight tends to be tends to be slow, it tends to be dead. Uh, we had uh, some, some tea time availability. So what we did is we leveraged this tea time availability 
and we worked that to our advantage and started moving some hard goods with that. So we started off with a promotion uh, where if you were to purchase a driver, you would receive a complimentary voucher for a twilight round of golf uh, available half hour after the start of twilight. So this is like a $95 value. Uh, so this is an amazing way for us to add value um, and, and, and really capitalize on, on that availability. So this is just something that we did. Maybe, maybe you have someone else going at your club. Maybe you have like the best barbecue going on and you can leverage this amazing food uh, in, in, into some retail opportunities or, or bouncing folks around to different outlets at your facility. There's a lot of ways you can take this, but um, that's something we did. That's something we're proud of um, and something that uh, might work for you if you make it your own. I'm um, going to do a quick, very high level uh, overview of Oak Creek. I'm not going to get into exact numbers, um, but if you look at Oak Creek, uh, you know, 18 hole standalone facility, uh, it's a Tom Fazio design. Um, we, we do approximately 52,000 rounds a year. Um, our retail numbers are not astronomical. Um, you know, we're, we're looking, uh, you know, in the neighborhood of $600,000, we're running about 1150 around in terms of average spend. Um, our gross margin is in the $330,000 range. Um, you know, this is, this is, uh, you know, may seem like a lot to some, um, you know, compared to our sister property over at Pelican Hill, that's nothing. Um, and some of the resorts out there. Um, but you know, we're, we're proud of what we, of what we've done. So partner with cool clubs who uh is who does all of our custom fitting for us uh they do well over a million dollars so when you add it all up as a facility we're we're up in the 1.6 1.7 million dollar range um so that's just a very very high level overview of oak creek and what we have going on and then um very very i think this is this is awesome most everybody knows what's going on with the rounds we're having this boom but wanted to put this up there just in case you haven't seen it um uh, the, the uh you know COVID round effects for the for the U.S. total rounds, we're, we're seeing kind of a slow incremental increase. Uh, July up 19.7 percent, August up 20.6, and then a massive boom in September. Um, kind of see that uh, staying strong through the winter, uh, at least in, in in Southern California, especially as you start to see some of our availability diminish with the uh, the shorter days. So things are strong, and the last retail numbers that I saw. I didn't find a most updated chart, but uh, retail numbers were going steadily along with those rounds. So this is all all good stuff for the crazy world that we're we're living in. Um, moving on here to uh, to what I consider to be probably one of the most important things that you have going on, um, or maybe one of your biggest challenges also is uh, is the team that you have. Um, I, you know, I've said here everything starts and ends with your team. I believe that's true. Um, look at the team at Oak Creek, uh, two major retail players. Uh, we have our retail manager who, uh, who's been with the club for almost 18 years. I've been here for 20 and then we have a salesperson that was at Pelican for six years and at Oak Creek for, for 14. So that's a lot of years if you add just the three of us together. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of, of tenure, a lot of history, um, and, and, and the team's important. Um, one of the biggest and most important things with, uh, you know, having an effective team um, and, and having them achieve goals is to get those employees engaged. Uh, employee engagement is a big deal. We spend a lot of time here at the Irvine Company, our parent company, the company that I work for, um, on employee engagement. Um, we're doing exercises all the time. We have employee engagement surveys that go out um, and feedback on me as a manager um, and the company as a whole. So. Employee engagement is a big deal. It's kind of one of those buzzwords that you hear a lot of. Um, instead of kind of getting into that, I was going to tell you a story about uh, a situation that always comes to my mind at Oak Creek uh, it, in regards to employee engagement. Um, this happened maybe four or five years ago. Uh, we put some new drivers on the floor um, and put the drivers out. Same day they go out, someone walks in the golf shop and buys the driver. That's not that big of a deal. but. Um, you know, the staff member that sold the driver uh, gives me a call and they want to let me know that we sold the driver because they're excited about the sale because uh, they're, they're, they're in it and, and they're excited. So they call me up, they let me know, and I tell them that's awesome. We celebrate that little win. 
And I hang up. A couple minutes later, I'm walking out the office, and I run into the other uh, staff member that was working in the golf shop. So there's only two people working in the shop. Run into the other person in the hall, and before I could say anything to them, they tell me about how we sold the driver and how exciting that was. So you've got two for two, a staff that's so engaged, so excited, so into it that they're they're letting me know when things are happening. Um, so that's the type of engagement I'm talking about. That's the type of engagement we have here. Um, not all the time, of course, that's not realistic, but that's what we try to foster and that's happening most of the time. Um, the, so how do you get a team engaged? There's a lot of things. Um, one of the, the ways that we do it is that we have goals. Um, I put a smart goal here because, uh, you know, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. It's important. It's important to have, uh, you know, some, some metrics tied to these goals. Um, but the most important thing with these goals is that uh, they're achievable, realistic, and that the team is made aware of these goals and that they're tracking them. So there's never a time where anyone working in the golf shop doesn't know uh, what the daily goal is. Uh, and how that translates to, to a monthly goal, and then where we are in relation to that goal. Uh, it, it's very, very important. Uh, we'll have team members running Z reports every day. Sometimes folks are calling me. I walk in the golf shop. They'll let me know halfway through the day they've already exceeded the daily goal. So um, everyone's made aware of that. I think that's really important that you do that at your clubs. Um, and then, you know, another way to get folks engaged um, is, is you incentivize them. Um, be, have, I haven't been here for 20 years. Uh, we've done like, boy, we've done so many different types of incentives that have worked. We've done things uh, all the way from, you know, you hit the monthly goals and there's a, uh, like a silly little pizza party. Um, we've we've had spiff payouts every on uh, at the end of every month. Um, and we've also had some, some times when we were able to do some profit shares. Of course, that changes um, as, uh, as ownership changes or as policies, tax laws, et cetera, change. Uh, but... Um, when it comes to incentives, I think you want to do as much as you can for your team. It really does make a difference. Um, if this was my business, what I would do is I would offer a 1% incentive on the gross margin to every staff member involved in the golf shop. Um, you know, yeah, if, if you look at, at our sales and let's say that ends up being, you know, four or $5,000 a, a, a staff member, that might seem like a lot, but you better believe that if everyone is sharing in the profit, uh, that they're going to at least cover that 1%. It's probably going to be in the 5 to 10% growth, and it's going to more than pay for itself. Um, but that's what I'd be doing if it was my business. I think that 1% profit share is amazing. Um, uh, empowerment. Uh, empowerment. Empowering your staff is a big deal. Uh, they they, they, they want to feel empowered. People like to be given choices. Uh, and they feel great when they have options, and they exercise these options, and they see the results of exercising these options in real time. So for example, our, all of our golf shop staff, they're empowered to offer some reductions in fees. They can do a discount on, on, on some shirts, on the driver. They can do almost anything they want in there. Um, if it's not something that we like, uh, we might have a little coaching session and maybe let them know why that wasn't the best call. Um, but for the most part, they make amazing decisions and uh, you know they don't, they don't lead with the, uh, with, with the discounts, but they're empowered to make those decisions and close those sales, uh, and that gets the staff engaged. Um, something that is very, very important also, and I can't stress this enough, uh, suggestive selling techniques, upselling techniques. You know, the old deal, you go to the, the you go to a restaurant, like you want some avocado on your burger, uh, that stuff adds up. Um, I, I, it should be mandatory uh, that, that folks are suggestive selling uh, at the counter. Um, it's, if, if you take a look at, at a situation at Oak Creek, for example, uh, let's say someone's coming in for uh, Saturday morning rack rate tea time, which for us is $180. Uh, we're not necessarily going to try to upsell them something on merchandise. We're going to take that person, identify them as paying rack rate. They're not a current member. We're going to try to suggestively sell them a membership. But if they are already a member or a guest of a member or something else is going on, then we're going to do uh, our, our typical line here is, are you doing okay in golf balls and gloves? Do you need any golf balls and gloves? Would you like some golf balls and gloves? And what ends up happening um, more often than not is people do need golf balls and gloves and they forgot that they needed that. You are genuinely providing a service. You're reminding people that need, need this stuff. Um, but what also ends up happening 
is, uh, you know, you end up having some incremental sales. Um, you do some quick math on this stuff and how it adds up. Uh, if you have all of your staff members, it's a mandatory upsell. Let's just say, for example, you have four staff members and they each sell an additional two sleeves via these suggestive selling techniques. That's eight sleeves a day, which isn't that big of a deal. It's only $112 or so a day. That translates to $41,000 at the end of the year. That's a lot. And that's just a couple sleeves a person. Throw in the gloves, you throw in anything else that pops in there. And all of a sudden you've made uh, a pretty big dent um, in your goals and you're gonna have some year over year increases. That's important. That's something you can do right away. Um, I think it's important to arm staff with promotions. Uh, so we have the upselling techniques when folks are at the counter, but let's say someone walks out onto the floor, uh, you know, what do they have at their disposal? Uh, and, uh, you know, for example, what we do is we have a monthly promotion. So every single month there's something going on. It could be, uh, you know, a deal on a pair of, on a pair of shorts when you buy a polo, buy a top and get 50% off the, the bottoms. That might be something we're running one month. The next month we have something completely different. Maybe it's that twilight round of golf promo that I talked about earlier, but every single month there's something going on. The staff knows about that promotion uh, and we have regulars walking in and they're, you know, at the end of the month, they're looking to see what it is and see if it applies to them. Um, so yeah, have some promotions, be consistent with it. We actually have a schedule of promotions. We, we plan these things out uh, for the whole year. Um, so we have 12 promotions. We know what they are in advance. We look to see how they did at the end of the month. Uh, and, and we adjust accordingly. Um, something else that I, that I think is important for the golf shop and, uh, and, and your team is to have a product request log sheet. Uh, basically, it's a sheet. Someone guests asked for something. Do you have this? Uh, do you carry this? Are you going to bring this in? Write it down. Um, you'd be surprised what was going to pop up on that list, and it's a nice way to track um, a nice success story in that one for us, um, and it sounds silly now. This was like 11 years ago, but you know we we have bamboo tees included in the round. They're on the carts. They're at the starters podium. They're at the range. Like we have tees everywhere here. Why would anyone want to buy tees? But 11 years ago, we realized we should probably have some plastic tees for sale in the golf shop. So we've got plastic tees and brush tees now, and martini tees, and all kinds of tees, and 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 those are doing well. And that's something that popped up uh, from the log sheet. Uh, and then uh, staff meetings, team meetings. You know. Hold these things, have have them on a somewhat regular basis, at least quarterly. Um, and, and that's an opportunity to go over all these things that I just talked about um, and, and, and get your staff excited and celebrate these wins, talk about what's working and what isn't. Uh, vendor management. So um, basically, you know, working with your vendors. So simple stuff here. Um, you want to build trust with with your with your partners. Um, these, these folks are experts. They know what they're talking about. You are the expert when it comes to your particular club, your customers and your clientele, but these folks know their product better than you do. They also know what's going to be trending. They've met with a number of other properties, uh, hopefully before they've seen you and they know what folks have ordered what's being pre-booked, build this trust with them, work with them, listen to them. You guys are in this together. I, I can't tell you how many uh, club reps, uh, apparel reps, when I talk to, and you know, the, they say I just came from this club, and oh boy, and you know, all those nightmares. Maybe they're saying that about me too. I don't know, but uh, you know, if folks don't listen as much as they should, um, these guys are the experts. Talk to them and work with them. Um, meet new vendors. Stay open-minded. Basically, you know, I, I try to meet with a new vendor like once a month. Maybe it's something that I, I wouldn't bring in or don't think I'm going to bring in kind of an on-the-fence thing, you see it, it, might make a little more sense when it's in front of you. And oftentimes, these these uh, these representatives are carrying some other lines that you didn't know they had, and maybe one of those is going to work out. But be open-minded with stuff. I'm going to get into some other things a little bit later uh, in, in relation to this. Um, this. This one, I think, this third point is gigantic. Um, you know, you should know what the rebates are, what the discounts you have, with uh, with various vendors, um, and and you know, really, like when's the last time you took a look at your vendor agreements? Um, it, simple thing would be just to take the top two or three vendors that you do the most business with, 
re reread the vendor agreement. Maybe you have a no charge logo in there and you've been getting charged logos for the last two years. Who knows? Uh, it's amazing the stuff that you're going to find, but you want to know about this stuff. Um, and, and, you know, maybe, maybe you're a couple thousand dollars off from a, hitting a rebate. Um, you know, you hope the reps are going to let you know this stuff, but they may not, may not be in their best interest. Um, you gonna want to take a look at that and use that to your advantage. That's a big deal. Um, the, uh, the vendor portals, um, use these things. They're easy. I, I have quick links on my desktop to all these passwords are saved. I am jumping right in there. Um, for example, TaylorMade, they're, uh, the TMAG, uh, portal for TaylorMade. You get an additional 3% off on all your orders when they're placed through the portal. I mean, why, why not take advantage of that? You know, you're going to email the rep, wait till he gets the email. Um, you know, do that or just go through the portal and save 3%. I mean, that, it, it just makes sense. Utilize those things. Uh, take advantage of that. Um, when you are bringing in, let's say you're meeting with a, a, a new vendor um, or you're having, uh, you know, an annual review of, of, uh, of business levels and what you did, um, you know, set clear expectations with these folks. Um, how often, you know, are, are they going to come in? How often would you like for them to come in? Um, who's who's going to be in charge of count and fills? Um, you know, do, do, you, do you mind if they show up monthly, go back in the stock room and count and fill? Uh, so we can set up our, our levels with them. Um, that's what I do. I have these guys coming in and doing a lot of that work for us. Um, but have those conversations so that it's clear uh, and that you're on the same page. Um, leveraging relationships. Basically, uh, the more you do for them, the more they're going to do for you. I, uh, with our vendors, the new vendor, uh, existing vendor, I let them know. I said, hey, you're basically a member of the club. I want you coming out here and playing. If you have friends that want to play, I want to get them out of a smoking deal when, when it's available. Um, we, we, we want, we want, you know, we want Oak Creek to be your first choice when it comes to playing golf or doing these things or having special events. Um, and what ends up happening as a result of that, if there's some type of a meeting, some type of product launch, they're coming to our place and they're spending those dollars with us, uh, and, and having those social catering dollars. Um, if let's say one of the cart guys drops a bag, scratches a driver, we tell the rep what happened and that driver comes at no cost. we do that is helpful uh, is we we do vendor scorecards at the end of the year we um, we have a little scorecard uh, the uh, the other two retail folks and myself we get in there we, uh, we put the vendor name on the top we we give them uh, rankings of you know scores of one to five we rank them on customer service their responsiveness um, their return and exchange policy and do they follow through with those things uh, we, we, we put in total sales, uh, we look at all the metrics and the performance of the brand and of the line. Um, and then we look at the rebates that we qualify in for any rebates, what were their discounts as compared, um, doing a vendor scorecard is a really good way to kind of see the year as a snapshot, see where you're at, see who's really helping you, who isn't. Um, I, I kind of have a goal of getting a new apparel vendor in there in the golf shop every year and a half or so. And basically the folks that are scoring low on that scorecard, they, are gone, uh, you know, as tough as it is to say, uh, you know, every year and a half or so, uh, someone is out and then someone else comes in and then there's a competition to, to stay in the shop. Um, and then this last one here, this is simple stuff. Call people back, reply to emails. It sounds so simple, but you have no idea uh, how many times I hear from these reps that people aren't calling them back. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things. They're people, uh, they're their peers or partners. Call people back. Uh, you know, don't, don't leave them hanging. No one wants that. We're rattling through this stuff. Thanks for hanging in there with me, guys. Um, let's see. Numbers don't lie. They don't, I guess, unless you uh, falsify the numbers. But um, the important thing here, uh, you know, is, is, is using these numbers to your advantage. Uh, the company I work for, the Irvine Company, they are a large, uh, primarily real estate company, and they live and die by the numbers. And I, 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 it's a very report-driven environment that I have found myself in it for a number of years, and it's kind of second nature for me. Um, I run reports constantly. 
I generate and build my own reports. Um, I'm doing performers for a lot of these things. I'm trying to get something new, trying to get an upgrade, uh, renovation, et cetera. Um, I'm going to proactively do a performa um, and include that in presentation to the company. Um, and we also, we also like to forecast our sales here um, by vendor in class. Maybe some of you are doing this. Maybe some of you don't have time to do this, but this is very, very helpful. Um, you probably have uh, you know, a, a line item for the month for your hard and soft goods sales. Um, so in effect, you're forecasting that, um, but break down those, drill down a little bit, um, you know, break it down a little bit by, by vendor and how much you think you're gonna do each month per, month per vendor um, uh, and, and, and by the class. Um, that can be a helpful tool. And then, uh, yeah, run another report when you're done with all that stuff, just because. Uh, group events. So, as I mentioned, uh, group events, big part of our success here. Almost one in every three rounds at Oak Creek is a group, uh, is a group round, um, either a large or small group. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do here. We could spend a whole hour on this. Uh, but number one, important question, should you implement a minimum spend? Do you have a minimum spend, spend in place? Um, you know, at Oak Creek, we don't. Um, we are in a very, very competitive uh, market when it relates to, uh, to groups, uh, and we find that at our price point, um, putting in a food, and, uh, putting in a, um, a minimum for retail uh, might be a deterrent. Uh, and we also find that at our price point, uh, these folks tend to spend these dollars with us anyways, so we don't force the point. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a flat spend or a spend per dollar included uh, in the contract. Um, something that I think is is an awesome idea. Uh, throw in ten dollars, uh, ten dollars spend uh, included for every tournament round. You know those guys are going to come in the golf shop with that ten dollar credit, and they're going to spend more than the ten. Um, charge the group five. Um, there's a, there's so many things you could do with that. Um, one of our big keys here is we have this uh, this one page retail offering. Basically, what we do is the, uh, the proposal goes out, the menus go out for a group, and then a one page with all of our retail offerings go out. We have the different retail pa packages. We have three tiers. Um, we have the vendors we work with. We talk about some of the tournament discounts available. We, we send that out. We start early uh, for these folks so that they get this stuff. And you know what? Um, you are truly performing a service when you do this. Uh, folks that you, know, you guys that are running tournaments, you know how it is. Um, you, you guys have done it in the past. Uh, a lot of these these uh, tournament coordinators, maybe they only have one group a year that they have to deal with, or it's some charity thing, and they don't really know too much about golf. How are they going to find a logoed golf ball with a charity's duck on the side of it? it, it they don't know what they're doing. Um, they're going to go find it. You want to make it clear from the beginning that you are the place to get that stuff. Uh, through and not only uh, is will it be affordable, but it's going to make their life easier for them. So create a one page and have your sales team send that out. That's easy stuff. Um, and then uh, once you've done that, reach out on a regular basis. Keep checking in, see if they need anything. Um, silly not to take advantage of tournament discounts. You should know what those are. Your event sales team should know what they are, and you should take advantage of those. Um, and then also just take a look at foot traffic and how you can increase or improve tournament foot traffic. Folks aren't checking in in the golf shop like they would be when they're uh, paying for some guest fees. So how do you get them in the golf shop? There's a lot of ways. Uh, for us, we, we um, turned our golf shop a number of years ago into a banquet space, built a small golf shop in the front area, and we moved our staging area. So uh, we, our staging area for regular play for tee times is up front by the golf shop. There's a great flow but it's not big enough to host uh, large, large group events. So we staged the golf carts behind the clubhouse. So it's difficult to get flow into the golf shop. We saw a reduction in, in sales and foot traffic. So what we did is we put a easy up in front of the shop. We put a rolling rack out there. We made sure that our bag drop staff, when folks were arriving, we, uh, we would let them know that the golf shop was available. We pointed out to them. We would put some bounce backs on the steering wheel. We would put some stuff on the GPS. There's a bunch of things you can do, but 
make sure you're maximizing foot traffic with these groups. Um, and then finally, I put this, well, we're going back to this World War II thing, this top secret dossier, spy versus spy. Um, we keep we keep notes on, on all of these groups. We keep very, very detailed notes on these groups. So there, there's two examples of this. One would be the Orange County Bar Association tournament, which we've had for here for a number of years. Uh, they have a $50 uh, credit in the golf shop every year. They these for some reason these are just giant humans, six foot two, six foot five men with giant feet, almost all of them, and they clean us out of the shoes, of extra large double XL shirts. They all love Travis Matthew, uh, so you know we caught on to that after a couple of years and we were prepared. That was something we kept in the notes. Something else we'll do, and this this sounds a little creepy, but you know let's let's uh, we'll go out there, we'll take some notes, we'll take a look, maybe even some pictures of some of the tea prizes. Let's say they were offering a dozen golf balls and uh, a pair of shoes and a logoed polo. And that's what was available at check-in, but they didn't get any of that from us. What happens next year when they return, or the time we're sending the contract out, we'll send our one page. We'll also send them a proposal for that exact same package. We'll send them. Uh, so that's, that's something that you can do. Um, take notes. Uh, if you have the Duncan. time and the staff. Yes. Duncan? Yes. What's going on? Hello, John? Duncan, are you there? I am, yes. John? Duncan, we've lost your audio somehow. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, I can hear you, yes. Can you hear me? I'm going to call back in. Duncan? John? Duncan, I, I think you can hear me. You're moving around like you can hear me. I, I can hear you. I want to try dialing in the audio number one more time. I think your audio was disconnected. Yeah, weird. Your visual, your visual was good. Uh, if you go to your control panel and uh, click on the audio, um, you, you don't need to re-enter the webinar. You're still there. Oh. I, you just need to call back in on the 562 number. Coming up. The access code and the audio pin. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Uh, Duncan is just about finished with his presentation. I think he got disconnected on uh, on his phone line. We'll give him just a second to roll in. Duncan, can you hear us? Hey, John, am I back on here? No, oh, there you go. Absolutely. All right, where did I lose you guys? Sorry for that. I don't think I touched anything, but I guess it happened. No, no problem, no problem. It's right where you are. Uh, right after group events, you were talking about the uh, the large men that uh, have that event that you guys prepare for. Right oh, now. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was right talking here. about the, lar the large the large humans. Yeah, you just finished them. that. And, uh, All right. Just got past There we go. Time. Yeah, and then uh, the second example I was going to uh, to get into uh, is that we keep we keep notes on 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 the uh the groups that don't have a spend with us so let's say for example um you know we'll look at the registration table uh we'll go out there they're given a dozen calls out and they're going to do uh, we'll take notes uh maybe do some photos of the registration table and the specific products they have and then the following year um, when we send the contract out, we'll also send them a proposal um, for those exact same items. We'll, we'll get a really good price on the golf balls, on a polo, and we'll say, hey, we noticed you had this stuff last year. Would you like us to source that for you? Um, and that's all incremental. So these are some things uh, that you can do if you're, uh, if you're paying attention and, and keeping these notes um, and have the staff to do it. Um, moving on to this uh, visual merchandising. Um, I know we're... Uh, we're getting close to, to time here. I won't leave room for questions, but um, visual merchandising is the practice of optimizing the presentation of uh, products 
and services to better highlight their features and benefits. That's like the, uh, that's the definition of it. Um, what is it? Uh, basically, we, we, we see things, we buy with our eyes. It's very important the way that things look. Um, I have this, uh, this little chart up here, the elements of visual merchandising. I won't go into everything, but uh, one point, this color is king. I think that that's a really big, feel, big thing. I think it's underlooked. Um, uh, I think that using color to catch the eyes of your customers and draw them to certain displays is a big deal. Um, every golf shop has a dead area. Um, there may be an area that you find folks aren't going to. Um, yellow is the is the the, the most noticeable cover. Um, gets our attention. Some ugly yellow, bright yellow hats, or uh, you know, an unattractive yellow golf bag put in the right place um, could make a difference. Um, I have an example of uh, I, I think a really well merchandised display here. Um, this is a Travis Matthew display, but you can see. Um, you know, it, it's it's vertical, right? It's they're, they're they're moving their way up. Everything's not on one level. Um, and what they're using, they're you know they have a little bit of everything. Um, but I I love the signage and I love the use of the ball washer um, as a prop. Um, so that that's a, that's a great example um, of of going vertical with your merchandise. Uh, there are some really nice golf clubs and really nice golf shops that I go into. And um, now that I've you know, I've been talking about this stuff for the last couple of years um, in depth. I mean, I can't help but see these things. And you walk in and it's just like a bunch of racks and it's all eye level. There might be like one or two mannequins. Um, and it's just, it's not as good as it could be. Um, I, I think you should do the best you can to, to try to create a, a fixture that looks similar to this. Um, I already talked about this, uh, this dead zone, um, but find where that is, see what you can do to drive foot traffic, traffic to that area. Um, Everyone knows we should be moving things around. You should be, make sure it happens. Um, uh, once a week is ideal. Um, and then I think this is important. Make sure you have a line in your financial plan for decor, um, budget that stuff. Uh, when the holidays come around and you wanna buy a bunch of pumpkins and a electronic skeleton for Halloween, go for it. Some uh, holidays, uh, you know, poinsettias, et cetera. Um, you, wanna, you wanna go to home goods buy some candles and some, some fake flowers. Um, it's easier if you have that stuff um, in the plan. Um, look at this next area. This is where we, we cue the, the soft calming Zen music and the waterfall starts. Um, this is a, uh, creating a wellness area. This is a great opportunity for um, incremental revenue. Maybe you have one of these going on, maybe you don't. Something to look at. Um, look at this uh, inspiring quote I have over here. Raise your words not voice. It is rain that grows flowers, not thunder. So that's deep. Um, that's by Rumi. He's one of my favorite Sufi poets from the 13th century. One of the many. Um, that, that's, that's good stuff. That'd be great too. If you have a member or someone that's upset, you can just point them in that area. Um, but this, this idea of a wellness area um, is something you should look at. Uh, let's, let's just imagine this as your, there's your, you know, you got a table over, over off, you know, on the side, uh, you've got this quote. Um, that's where you have your sunscreen, some skin skincare, some lip treatments, maybe uh, a scented candle, um, some CBD offerings if you're doing that. Um, percussion massage guns. We uh, we we brought Thera guns in. That was an amazing success for us. Um, you could have those there. You could have some books, right? Some golf specific fitness. Um, you could have some some recipes on making the smoothies or whatever. You get kind of get where I'm going with this. Um, this is a, a great opportunity for um, incremental sales because if you don't have this uh, in your shop right now and you put it in there, there's going to be some new stuff going on, some new sales. Um, and that leads right into this idea of incremental revenue um, and new offerings. Um, general philosophy on this, basically you're only going to sell, you know, so many golf balls. So let's say you're maximizing your golf ball sales by keeping secret dossiers on your groups. You've got your staff engaged. You've got all these suggestive selling techniques. Everything's firing on full cylinders. Uh, that's awesome. But at the end of the day, you're only going to sell so many golf balls. But if you introduce something new into the mix, like, like the wellness area, um, like the uh, Saragon um, percussion massagers, uh, that's those things. The the, uh, the Theragun Pro is like six hundred and fifty dollars retail. Uh, you sell ten or twenty of those, that's going to make a difference. Um, and that's 
100% incremental. Um, another, uh, another amazing opportunity I wanted to highlight cool clubs for us. So, you know, we're only going to sell so many golf clubs, even if we're giving away rounds to do it. Um, and we can do, we can be doing demo days all the time, but we bring in a group like cool clubs, um, that's doing what they're doing. That's a massive, um, incremental revenue opportunity for us when they came in year over year growth without us really doing much at all. Um, and then some industry trends. Um, I'm, I'm not going to, to claim that I know what the future holds. 2020 has taught me that, uh, if anything. Um, but I, uh, I noticed how I, uh, I think I said COVID once. I was trying to make it through the whole time. Um, I think I said it in that chart. But, you know, there's some stuff going on out there in the world. Um, you know, even though rounds are up, even though our shops are busy, I, I think we're going to be moving to a lot of online uh, mobile pop-up shops um, and, and, and online orders. Uh, what if you were to create a small digital catalog and a special offer and you email that to your database in, in a couple of weeks from now? You know, what would come from that? Um, that would be incremental. That would be something interesting to do. I think that's going to be a trend. Um, you know, speaking with some of the reps, I, I think we're going to see a lot more fitting events, small fitting events, appointment only, which allows us to reduce the inventory we're carrying. Um, I think that's going to be uh, a trend. And then, you know, like, for example, uh, Nike is going to be doing a little mobile, mobile pop-up shop where uh, we link um, and have regular running shoes available, and, and, and that's going to get run through our account. Um, that's something we've never done before. That's going to be exciting. I think that's going to become a trend. And then I, uh, I put health and wellness. Everyone's working out. Um, I'm not as much as I should, but a lot of people are working out. They care about themselves. Um, having that health and wellness center uh, would be would be terrific. Also, um, very quickly here because we're down to ten minutes, and I want to leave some some time for questions. If there are any, um, but yeah, some best practices and some random ideas. Uh, sale items. There's a million things you can do with sale items. Something that works work for us is we just hide some of the stuff in the back, and then we magically it comes back out again four or five months later, and it's new stuff. Um, that's a that's a neat little trick that works. Um, one of some very very successful uh, retail promotions we did uh, is, is with some wedge and putter related short game clinics. You uh, you do a short game clinic. Uh, let's say it's an hour and a half, two hours, and included in the clinic is uh, you know the wedge of your choice, and um, you make sure you have a small section in that in that clinic where you're fitting uh, the right balance and loft. Uh, for that particular golfer, um, you know, that's a great way to sell 30 wedges in an afternoon. Um, those work great. Um, when you're shopping for apparel, um, you know, some, some shirts are just like straight up winners. They're going to be amazing. And it's a fashion piece. You're probably not gonna be able to find more of those things. I mean, I've had situations where we're looking at a line, um, in our golf shop in public view, two golfers walk up and they're grab a shirt or point at a certain shirt. And, and, and I was into that shirt too. You know, that's going to be a winner. Double up on that thing, triple up on that thing. Um, take a chance on it. See if you picked right. Um, that, that's, that's a good way to, to, uh, to help things out. Um, training aids, super easy stuff. We had a, an instructor here at Oak Creek that was really into the orange whip training aid. And that was uh, something that, and I think it's a good, it's a good training aid, not, not, uh, not knocking it. It's great. But he was into that. He was selling so many of those, but they weren't buying them from us because we didn't have training aids. So we have one single training aid available and it's an orange whip and we sell like 50 of those. So find out what your instructors are into, what they're selling and, and, and have a small offering of those. Um, and then I'm leaving it off with this idea of making, making a scene with things. Um, this is a Jordan limited Jordan drop that we did back in February. Um, you know, we, we get two of these a year um, cause we do a fair amount of business with Nike. Um, and you know, these things, we get like 10 pairs, they sell themselves. They're online on eBay later in like, you know, 10, 15 minutes after we sell them. Um, these things would sell themselves. We don't really have to do anything, but we create a bunch of pomp and circumstance around that. We put signage up at the golf course. We're doing stuff in social media, send an email blast. Uh, we're, we're creating a scene. We're creating excitement around something like that because we can. Um, and, that is it. Thank you. We got like eight minutes for questions. So um, thank you for uh, for making it through that with me. Um, 
and I uh, appreciate you guys spending your morning with me. And, and like I said, I hope you took uh, a couple things, at least one, away from this. Thank you so much. Indeed. Thank you, Duncan. Uh, certainly some questions have come in. Uh, you alluded to it a little bit there towards the end, but where do you see golf retail going? I know you mentioned online and pop-up shops, but uh, do you see that being a consistent trend that's going to go on five, ten years down the line? And can you talk a little bit about where you see this going over the next uh, ten years? Yeah, I, I do. I, I mean, I, I do think that um, everything's going digital, and if there is a way for us to to offer um, a, a, a you know, more, more for the same, let, let's say, for example, uh, you know, we're, we're carrying 17, 25 Travis Matthews style. If we can find uh, a great way to make the entire catalog available for someone without having to having that, have that inventory, but have those revenues uh, run through uh, our account, that's an, that's an absolute no brainer. And I think that's going to be um, something that's, that's going to be going to be happening. Absolutely. And uh, you talked about a little bit about the team getting excited for selling hard goods. As you know, and as we all know, the hard good margin at the green grass level is very small, especially in comparison to the big box retail shops. How do we keep the energy up and the inventory fresh when the margins are so slow, when it is such an important service element to a higher level clientele? Yeah, I mean that's where that's where you're going to be working with your reps. You're going to be doing a lot of count and fills. Um, you know, like we we always want to make sure we have you know a, a couple flavors of each of of each club, and then when that's when that's sold, we might have one one in back stock, and then and then that's gonna we're gonna gonna, gonna call the rep and or he's gonna stop in, and we're going to um, replenish that. Um, but it, it it is a challenge, um, but it's not something you give up. I mean, you, know, you talk about that creative promotion that that we did with. With using some open tea times that worked for us um you can include uh maybe a, you know a 20 or 30 you find let's say you find um one of your instructors that maybe isn't as busy as he or she would like to be um, maybe they want to offer a 30 minute intro lesson um with the purchase of uh, of a putter or wedge or driver um and that, get, that gets their business spurred and also adds value um uh, to that sale um i think those are some some successful things you could try out What methods do you have for identifying slower moving areas of your shop and adversely hot spots in your shop? And how does those areas change? And how much control do you have over those areas? Well, so yeah, so here's the trick. You don't ever clean your carpets and then you see where all the foot traffic's going. And um, no, uh, you, you know, if you spend a lot of time in your golf shop, um, you're gonna see where, where people go. Um, so, you know, it, it, you're not going to create a blind, uh, you know, mice trap maze for folks, but you definitely want to put some, something in their way, um, you know, so that, and so you can direct them with, with where you're placed in your fixtures. Um, you can take some, some, let's say there's a new, a new line. Um, sure. You want to promote that stuff. You could have that right up front. Um, but you could also highlight the new line. Um, you know, have the staff at the counter mention the new line and then put that in the slow area in the back corner. And then people are going to be interested in seeing it, making their way over. Um, we talked about using some, uh, some bright colors. Um, you could, uh, you could hide one of those, uh, Trader Joe's monkeys, uh, in the corner and have some type of promotion with that. There's a lot of ways you can get creative and make it your own. Um, but really it comes down to just understanding the flow of your shop, paying attention, identifying those slow zones, and then finding it as, you know, what it is that your particular customers are interested in, what do they want, and then putting those things that they want in those slow, in those slow areas. Those are all, I'm just looking here at the question box. Oh, I got another one here. Okay, this is from uh, Jonathan Gulia, head professional at Hacienda Golf Club. Do you, Duncan, utilize an open-to-buy sheet or program? 
And I know you uh, like to put a lot of that on the reps, but how much of that do you do yourself? Uh, we, we use the reps for the majority of that. Um, so I don't do too much of that myself, to be honest. Um, and how many team members uh, in total are on your uh, golf shop team? Well, uh, you know, before COVID, we had we had uh, eight staff members, um, and we are unfortunately down to four at the moment. So things have have changed a little bit. Um, you know, it, you, you come into our golf shop at the moment. Um, the majority of our, of our golf shop is completely closed off. We we actually only have one fixture open. Um, and our, our sister property, Pelican Hill, has not reopened their golf shop yet. We've we've taken a really conservative, uh, uh, extremely safe approach to reopening um, and avoiding exposure to both our staff and guests. So, uh, so yeah, things have changed a lot in our golf shop. So it's not the best example of what we're able to do at the moment, but uh, we're happy we're keeping people safe. Indeed, Duncan, thank you so much for being on the Catalyst webinar today. Uh, wonderful to see you share your ideas and your thoughts. And it's not every day we get the national recipient of the, of the Merchandise Your Year Award on the, uh, on the Catalyst. So we're grateful that you made the time to educate the, the section this morning. For everyone on the Catalyst webinar this morning, we will be having a very special Catalyst next week. Uh, Tom Addis and Jeff Johnson are going to be taking us through the years of the Southern California PGA little Q&A facilitated by uh, Eric Lohman, and uh, encourage you all to be on there. Once again, Duncan, thank you for being on the Catalyst webinar. Everybody on the call this morning, thank you very much for supporting the Catalyst webinar series. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Stay sane.